Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about money and specifically how I make money while at university. If you're new here, then my name's Lydia and I'm a biology graduate studying medicine in Southampton. Since medicine is my second degree, I have to fund it myself. I don't get a tuition fee loan, which means I need to find £9,250 per year for tuition fees. And I also need to find money to pay my rent, bills and you know basically just live. I've just finished my first year and this year I've managed to earn just over £10,000 while studying at uni. So today I thought I would kind of break down for you how I did this, my different streams of income and any tips I have for making money or saving money while at uni. So if you're already at uni then you probably have a sort of rough idea of what it costs to live at uni but I thought it'd be useful to quickly break down my monthly outgoings so you can have an idea as to how much money I need to find each month on top of paying my tuition fees. I've got it written down here and so I'm going to just read it out for you quickly. Oh, just quickly a bit about me. I live in a three bedroom flat with my boyfriend in Southampton. We do split the rent and bills so the amount I'm going to tell you now is half of what everything costs. Rent is £425. Bills £150. This includes council tax because my boyfriend isn't a student anymore. Sadly, we do get a 25% discount because I'm a student, but we still have to pay council tax. My phone bill is £50, which I know is quite high. For subscriptions, I pay for prep, Spotify and Beyond, which is a fitness app, and that comes to £40 a month. For the gym, I pay £20 a month. For Ubers, I spend about £40 a month, maybe more, because I have to catch Ubers home from work when I finish really late and it's dark and I can't walk home. And then finally, food shop, £80. We spend about £40 a week, which works out £80 a month for me, which totals £825 per month outgoings. And that is just the bare minimum. That is like the basic stuff. That doesn't include going out, takeaways, having fun, my makeup buying habits. So obviously I need to find more than that if I want to be able to do those things. But yeah, £825 is sort of the minimum I need to find each month at the moment. So one thing I found when trying to make money at uni is there are lots of different ways that you can get money at uni and I want to break down for you today my sort of four-ish streams of income because I want to show you that not all my money comes from just working at the pub, uh, which if you watch my videos you'll know I work at a pub, but not all my money comes from that. So by far my biggest kind of stream of income is my maintenance loan. Even though this is my second degree, I still get a maintenance loan, I just don't get the tuition fee loan. I'm lucky enough to get the maximum maintenance loan, which gives me about £9,200, and that honestly is a lifesaver. I wouldn't be able to do this course without my maintenance loan, so I'm really grateful for it. The maintenance loan literally comes out of my account and goes straight to university when I get it, because I use my maintenance loan to pay my tuition fees. So I never actually really see that money or use that money. It goes straight out to the uni to pay my tuition fees. 9,200 doesn't quite cover the tuition fees, so I do have to pay obviously 50 pounds from my own money, but the bulk of my tuition fees is covered by the maintenance loan. And that means all the other money that I earn goes on my rent, bills, and living. So most of my income comes from my part-time job. I've worked in a local pub near to me for the last year or so, and it can be really hard work. I don't love working in hospitality. I got my first job in a restaurant when I was 16 and I've consistently worked in restaurants and pubs since the age of 16 and I'm now 24 and if you've worked in hospitality then you know it isn't easy. But for me the upside is the way that you can work shifts around uni. It's quite flexible and you can work evenings and weekends which means you can find the hours to fit around university. I get paid minimum wage for an over 23 year old which at the moment is £8.91 per hour and in the past year I've earned about £8,000 working at the pub. That is quite a lot of hours. I worked 15 to 20 hours during semester one, so from September till Christmas. And then in semester two, we were actually in lockdown for the majority of semester two. And I was lucky enough to receive furlough pay. Without the furlough pay, I don't know what I would have done. I needed that money to pay my rent. So I'm forever grateful that I got furlough during that time. And it was a godsend. And also the upside to that was that I didn't have to actually go to work for five months. Um, so although I do say I worked part-time, this year at uni, I did only work part-time for semester one. Semester two, I only worked part-time during exam season, actually, which was kind of annoying. Um, pubs reopened just as we were getting ready to sit exams, and I did have to do a couple of shifts. During exams, I cut back to 10 hours a week, which for me was still fine. I think some people choose not to work at all during exams, and I can totally see why you wouldn't want to work during exams. I still had to have some money coming in, so I did try to do the bare minimum work while exams were going on. I think when I was working during uni, I had a good routine going. 
if you are going to work part time and do as many hours as I was doing then the best way to do it is to have a really good routine, a good planner and you're going to have to accept that sometimes you're not going to be able to go to social events because that's the kind of thing that happens in the evenings at uni and that's when I was doing my work at the pub and that is a downside however not going out does save money but for me I just think that I've already done uni once this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make when it comes to working part-time my biggest tip would be to try and negotiate one really long shift so like a 10 hour day on a weekend and then you don't really have to work any other days sort of getting more hours into one day means that less days of your week are disrupted by work because even if I'm working four hours in the evening I still need an hour to get ready half an hour to walk there half an hour to come back and I'm gonna not have any time to do anything in the evening so doing 10 hours on a weekend day is much better than doing two five hour shifts in the evening so if you can I'm not saying it's always possible but if you can negotiate one longer shift a week or two longer shifts at one point I was doing three evenings of five hours um, plus five hours on the weekend and that meant four days out of seven were taken up with a shift at work and I'm one of those people that if I know I have work later I don't want to do anything else I just think oh I'll start work at four so you know basically psychologically it is better as well just to have one bigger shift especially in hospitality I find that if you stay with a restaurant or a pub longer the easier it becomes to negotiate because they don't want to lose you whereas if you're new it's harder to go in and start making demands for me at the pub now I find it a lot easier to say this is what I can do, like it or lump it. Also, I will say the majority of my earnings from my part-time job do come in the summer month. Last summer, before I started med school, I was working 40 hours a week. I was absolutely determined to earn as much money as possible. The pubs had reopened after lockdown and nothing else was really going on that summer so I just worked really hard. Um, this summer I've done something similar but I've actually taken on a new job at the university so I'm still working at the pub in the evenings but in the daytimes I'm working for the uni on the accommodation hotline which basically just involves um, answering the phones and emails to freshers who are applying for halls and to be honest it's much easier than working in a pub and it pays better it pays 9.97 an hour so i do think another tip would be that if you are looking for work definitely look into getting jobs at your university because universities have lots of money so they're probably going to pay more than minimum wage the hours are also going to be flexible around university time because if they're hiring you as a student then they know that you can't work certain times it also means that you're probably going to be working with other students which can be really fun and i found that they don't tend to overwork you in the same way that you get overworked in the hospitality industry so I do think I'm going to be looking for more jobs at the uni the contract I've got at the moment is temporary till the end of the summer holidays but that kind of works really well because it will end the week before my lecture starts so another great reason to look for part-time work at uni overall I would say it is possible to work part-time at uni you just need to be very well prepared plan ahead um, be smart with the shifts that you do and always be looking for other opportunities okay so next up is side hustles i'm only a small youtuber really small to be honest in the grand scheme of things i've been really surprised to find out how much money smaller youtubers can earn and this has been a godsend to me this year i never went into making videos to make money i went into making videos to help people who are applying to medicine like me but the fact that i can now make a little bit of money off it to put back into med school is like the best thing for me. I would definitely say that monetizing your hobbies while at uni if you need the cash is not a bad thing. I know that some people say, you know, you shouldn't monetize things that you enjoy, but if you enjoy it and you can make money off of it, I don't see why that is always a bad thing. So from YouTube, I'll say that the money is very up and down. Some months I can make up to £500 from a mix of AdSense and brand deals and some months I'll make nothing. So I can't rely on it as income every single month and I can't quit my part-time job just right now for YouTube. But I will say that the money is quite good. Like I can make good money off of this and it supports me through med school. Now I'm not saying everyone needs to go out and start making YouTube videos if that's not what you want to do but there's so many other things you can do. Whether it's selling something in an Etsy shop or using Depop or being a tutor and tutoring A-level or GCSE kids or you could be an ambassador for a brand at uni. I know like Virgin Media and a few other brands look for ambassadors every year and you get commission and things like that and it's kind of flexible work. Or you could work the open days at uni and just be a student ambassador for the uni. And basically the upside to these sort of side hustle jobs are that 
they're flexible you can work when you want you can kind of be your own boss a little bit and it's just a little bit of extra cash here or there that really helps it's not always guaranteed income i've also got a job working for the uni making um youtube videos for their youtube channel and tiktoks for the university tiktok and i got that job from making youtube videos on this channel even just putting yourself out there a bit can get you opportunities so whether you want to write a blog or create an instagram page they can get you opportunities so really i can't recommend enough sort of like figuring out something you like and maybe trying to make a bit of money off of it and then the final sort of stream of income I have is from bursaries so my university offers a bursary to undergraduates from lower income families and the amount you get is calculated based off your maintenance loan so it all kind of links together but I was lucky enough to get £2,000 in bursaries this year I was paid two lots of £500 and one lot of £1,000 and this was a lifesaver like that is four months rent just covered right there so I'd absolutely look into whether or not your university does something similar i know my sister's at leeds and they do something similar for her so it's worth looking at whether or not the university has scholarships or bursaries available for you on top of that i have been researching bursaries a lot this year and to be honest there's not that much out there as far as i can see please comment below if you found some bursaries that i don't know about basically the best bursary i can find for med students is the bma charities fund this bursary is specifically for med students who are doing medicine as a second degree i believe you can get up to 2500 pounds a year but the only catch is you can't apply till second year so it wasn't available to me this year to apply but i am absolutely going to apply for it this year and I think it's available years two three and four so hopefully I can apply for that and hopefully I can get that one this year but that's just something to know if you're going into medicine as a second degree there is a bursary there specifically for you it's just you have to wait till second year when I go through that process of applying I will definitely update you guys on how easy it is and how much I received and maybe why I received that much bursaries are kind of few and far between i will link below other ones that i found that i'm personally not eligible for so hopefully somebody watching this might see one that they're eligible for so i will link those below because i'm sure they can be useful to someone so those are my main streams of income at uni and that is how i have funded my first year of uni full transparency i do have some savings that i saved up when i was training to be a teacher and i have dipped into that occasionally for like birthdays and holidays and things like that so i am lucky to have that sort of cushion if I need it but really I'm trying to save that money for when I'm in third and fourth year and I'm doing placement and I don't want to work as much so the money is there in savings but yeah I haven't touched it too much this year and also my boyfriend does drive me around a lot um, and he doesn't really ask for any money or petrol or anything like that so I'm really grateful to him because he saves me a lot of money on public transport and does pick me up from work a lot I'm hoping to learn to drive in the next year or so but for now I am grateful that I have that so in conclusion earning money at uni is definitely possible I've done it it just requires determination and motivation to work even when you're tired I think it also requires clever planning and the willingness to rely on different streams of income at different times throughout the year so that you can be flexible I hope this has helped and given you some ideas as to how you can earn money at uni if you have any questions please leave them in the comments obviously we're going into second year now so I've got to do it all again and find the money all over again but first year has reassured me that it is possible and I'm going to be okay and hopefully if you are looking into funding a second degree yourself this has given you some reassurance. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!